It is Carl Brown for GuitarLessons365.com. We're going to finish off the Unforgiven trilogy today by learning the Unforgiven 3 by Metallica. Uh, well, we'll finish off. At this point, it's a trilogy. If you see this 10, video, 10 years down the road, it could be part of a five-part series. I don't know, but uh, this is all we got so far uh, from Metallica. So it's got some really cool stuff in it. Uh, I'm going to be going through all the riffs. I, I kind of arranged that opening piano line issue part. I arranged that for guitar as well. Um, the one thing I'm not going to do here is try to get Kirk Hammett solo note for note. Usually I do kind of all solos kind of note for note. This one especially is just him. I'm going to show you some of the licks and stuff that he's using and the key, the scales and, and all the stuff that he's using. But it's one of those things like just crank up the wah. I believe this is the first time and only time Kirk Hammett has ever used a wah on a, on a, on a recording. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm right about that. You guys let me know in the comments whether I'm wrong. Anyway, um, but regardless, um, he's just kind of going for it on a lot of these licks. So getting it note for note is kind of redundant. It's not really possible anyway. He's just kind of digging in. and So I think a better treatment of this solo, because it's the nature of it, he's just kind of winging it and improvising it. I'll uh, just kind of show you some of the licks that he's using, the keys he's using. So you can just kind of do your own thing there. Um, so I'm not going to try to get bogged down in that solo today. Or take a look. that There's some kind of fills lower in the mix in like the verse and chorus sections. That actually I don't think Kirk Hammond does a lot live when I see it play live. Uh, see him play live because there's a lot of layers going on. So th some of those I'll skip as well. But for all the major parts and major harmony parts and all that stuff, um, we will do note for note. All right, before I get into it though, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Ring the notification bell so you'll know what loose, uh, blah, 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 when I release a new video. And please check out my Guitar Academy. It's the number one way to support what I do here on YouTube. Um, you'll see a link to the description of it in the description below. That link will give you a free seven day trial to my Academy. You can um, check out all my guitar courses. That's what the Academy is all about. I got courses on complete beginner stuff to more advanced courses in ear training, improvisation, theory, guitar tone technique, you name it, it's in there. You get personalized support from me. Um, and it is a great way of supporting what I do here on YouTube with all these free song lessons because they couldn't exist without the Academy. All right, so please check out uh, the link below and get your free seven day trial and uh, support what we do here. All right, and um, we're gonna jump into the song now. So we're in standard tuning because Metallica is one of the only bands in the heavy bands in the world that actually rocks in standard tuning. Um, now, I'm arranged this intro uh, here, the piano little intro for guitar. Now, this is going to require a little bit of hybrid picking to get it just right. There's a couple of lines being like the cello is doing some like little bass lines moving around. Obviously, you can't get every one of those things on like one playable guitar part, but um, we get pretty close to it though here. So, and it's the same thing repeated twice. So, oh well one exception. So we have this intro. It starts around an E minor chord here. Just in standard tuning. So we have um, the 7th fret on the high E, 8th fret on the B, ninth on the G, ninth on the D. So those four notes, you're just going to pick across them from the high E down to the D string four times. Alright, and now we start the actual riff. So that little intro right there only happens at the very beginning. And now from this point, we're gonna, from where I start here, we're gonna play the exact same arpeggio. We're gonna add that low E string in it. And from this point on, we're gonna repeat what I'm about to show you right here twice for this piano intro. Alright, so what I still have the same notes here, but I'm gonna add the low E string. So in order to do that, I have the open E here, and then you can use your middle finger or ring finger whatever feels comfortable for you. Pick that note, and then you can pick the rest. If you're, if you run or play this whole thing finger style, that works too. So we have this. So I'm letting that low E ring now. And then you just pick across it four times over that low E. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it to a G major. So, 
That requires you to do a bar here at the seventh now, at least across the top three strings. You're also playing the eighth fret there on the B, so you're already playing that, so you can leave that there. And you have the ninth fret on the D, you still hold that there. Um, but you move your pinky over to the 10th fret here on the A string. So that gives you a G major chord. And we're gonna do that same picking pattern there, but of course the bass note here is on the 5th string, the A string. So you're gonna pick that while picking, using whatever finger you want to pick the top string, and then continue that picking pattern. So it came from the E minor. G. Same pattern. From here, it's the pattern just to make it work on the guitar and not have these like really crazy long stretches, it, you do have to change the pattern. All right, so that right there is you're going to bar across the 10th fret of the high E and the B. And you have to pick the open D string. So it's built around a, a, um, a D major chord. So you pick, so the, the notes though that we're playing here, we're gonna arpeggio down first. 10 on the high E, then 10 on the B, then 12 on the G, then 11 on the G. So just, that's why the pattern is changing. It's still a four note pattern, but you have two notes on the G string. So we have this. So when you first play that though, you can now have the D string and the bass. Top string with your finger, and then when he starts picking through it, starting the third time, he hits the A string in the bass. That's just something that's going on with either the I forget the cello or the piano part itself does play. It's still a D major chord, it's just got an A in the bass. So this. So then starting the fourth time, when you're repeating it, you're doing that high E, then the B, there's a little moving little transition uh, bass line, moving bass line. What's going to be the C here is that the, the eighth fret on the low E string, while picking the eighth fret on the B string as well with your like middle finger. And then you're going to play the 11th fret there on the G. So we have this. Now with A in the bass. Then just the first two notes of the arpeggio. Just like that. So I jump back here and grab it. And then we're gonna end it with this part. So that's a full bar at the uh, seventh fret there on the, uh, of course, at the all strings. And then you're gonna, so you're picking the, that B note at the seventh fret on the low E and catching that high E too as well. And then you can pick 10, A, seven on the B string and then go back to that seven on the high E, then 10, eight, seven on the B. All right, so just repeated that a couple times. Remember, you only have to hit the bass note the first time through. Let it ring. And then we're gonna change the bass note. We still got it's still built around this B chord, but we're gonna have the F sharp in the bass. It's kind of like we did before on the D. So that's the ninth fret there on the A string in the bass. So pick that. And now up top the melody is gonna be 10. Remember, you have to pick that first note with the, the with your middle finger. Then 10. Eight, seven, then nine on the G, and then we're gonna go back to the seventh fret there on the low E string as the bass note, and you're gonna play hyper pick that um, eighth fret on the G, and then you're gonna make that a full bar, because now you're just gonna do a quick little arpeggio, kind of dies out too. So we have the nine on the D, eight on the G, seven on the B. So all together for that last chord. Then it just repeats the same thing from that E minor with the E in the bass. Just a little bit faster. So nothing very... Then 
we get to the, um, the which is really kind of the main riff of the of the song, and, and it goes into really what's the verse section. And for this one here, we're gonna hear. Um, Kirk and James kind of split off. Kirk has a really cool line uh, sequence that he's doing. So, but this main riff is this. So this is real guitar now, not an arrangement of the piano part. James section was what he's doing. So he starts the line. So we're gonna play just this low E string and then the octave of that at the second fret on the D string. So you go back and forth between those a couple times, like three times. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a quick hammer from two to three on the, on the uh, low E string and then grab that E on the, the uh, D string as well again. So I have, so then repeat that. All right, now from there, when um, Lars comes in, we get to what was is really kind of the true. Um, I don't know. You can kind of. It's kind of hard to break this song up into chorus, um, chorus, verse, chorus, verse. You know. Um, so this opening verse slash chorus, whatever it is, um, it, it starts moving around the bass line here, and this is when Kirk comes in as well too with his line. So James here though, after the drums came in, is this. the same riff a couple times but now from here what he's gonna do is he's gonna go over to the third fret on the A string you're gonna still hold that E on the D string so you have the third fret on the A which is a, a C there just pick across those two notes a few times or four times and then just move the note on the A string down to the second fret that B still holding the E up top That a couple times and now take the note on the D string down to the first fret. Alright, down to that D sharp. And then pick across the A and D again. So we have this. Starts with the same familiar riff. And then we just have this little ending. He just goes back and forth between the E's like four times. And then just ends it with that open E. Now, Kirk's part there is really cool. So when we he gets to this part where he's kind of moving the bass line around. The, the bass note around. As soon as you get to that, we have Kirk that starts playing this. All right, so that moves around pretty quick. It's not the easiest thing in the world to play, but it sounds really nice against that other section that uh, James is playing. So we're way up here at the 12th fret on the low E, 10th fret on the A, 
and then 14th fret on the D. So you're gonna pick from the E string to the A, to the D string, then back to the A. So that's the first, that's the pattern basically, that's the picking pattern through all these chord shapes. So what? So E, A, D, A. Now, he's gonna pick through that again, the same picking pattern, but he's gonna change the chord. So what he's gonna do here is he's going to now rotate, instead of playing the 10 on the A and the 14 on the D, he's now gonna play the 10 on the D and the 14 on the A. So you just kinda rotating those two fingers. Still got the E here on the, in the bass at the 12th fret there, so we have this. And then do that again. do that twice. We have this. Alright, now from there you're gonna jump down here to the eighth fret here, the C here. So this this works with when he's when he gets to that chord and then when James gets to that chord, that's this is when um, Kirk gets here. So we're gonna play kind of the same thing we did here, just not as big of a stretch. Eighth fret on the low E, seventh on the A, tenth on the D. So that same picking pattern though, across those three notes. And then the same thing, we're gonna rotate the, basically move the seventh fret to the D, the 10th fret on the A. So we're just kind of shifting those fingers. So this. Pretty cool, so just like this. And then we're going to come down here to the 7th fret. Now this is when, it, when James gets to that part, we have this. So that's going to be the 7th um, fret on the A, 7th fret, I'm sorry, 7th fret on the low E and the A, and then the 5th fret there on the D. So you st at first you just do that same picking pattern there. And then he has this. And that's just playing seven on the low E, six on the A, five on the D, and then shift back one fret and go kind of a set hammering five, uh, four to five, pull back up to four. So all together. That's the hardest part is jumping back to the beginning. Then we have that ending. And now we're going to kick in the big guitars. We have this um, part that starts here. This I kind of call this the heavy verse. I don't really know what to call this section. but. Looks like this. All right, so that starts with this. You can just the low E open and the seventh fret maybe just, uh, maybe use full power chord, E power chord, and then we're gonna have this. So that's sliding from 5 to 7 on the A, then play 5 on the D, and then play 9, I'm sorry, 7 on the D, slide to 9, and then you have, kind of get that E power chord again, so we have this. One more time. Then you kind of do the same thing again, it's a little different ending. So that's that same, 5 to 7, 5, slide 7 to 9, then the, you, down to the 5th fret on the, uh, on the uh, D string here, that's the difference, so, so instead of doing that, there's maybe a slight bend on that, and then hit the low E open, so we have this so far. And 
then you gotta do the same as the first time through. You just actually do that much of the riff. Slide up to the nine, and then we're gonna put this little tail on it. That ends the riff. So that's that fifth fret power chord, the D power chord hit a couple times, to this B power chord, to the seventh fret of the low E hit a couple times. So the whole section is this. Repeat. And then we have this next one, which, I don't know, maybe it's a chorus. I don't know. Sounds pretty cool either way. It looks like this. All right, so like I said, there are some little tiny, like, over, you know, overdubbed things, fills going on by Kirk. Um, I'm just not really focusing on those, just on the main riff here. So we have this um, E power chord. Goes over to a C power chord off the, uh, let's say, the eighth fret of the low E string. To this D power chord off the fifth fret of the A string. To the G power chord off the third fret of the low E. So this. All right, and then we have this little chromatic one. So you're gonna start by hitting the seventh fret on the A string twice. Then going over down a major third to this eighth fret there on the low E string. Now what he's gonna do is he's gonna take that same shape down a fret each time. So, but you're not gonna hit the top note twice each time. So you're just gonna do this twice the very first time on the top note. And then go down a fret and just hit each note, each note once. And then down another fret. Where this. And then it starts the riff over again. And then we have this little chromatic thing, but he takes it all the way down like this. So it starts the same way there. So you ended there at the sixth fret. And now when you, you're gonna do the same thing, so it's starting now at the fourth fret, but here that fourth fret when you're gonna hit twice again on the top note. Because you're kind of starting it over there because he paused on that sixth. So we have this. So that's hit that note twice, that top note, the, the four down to five in the low E, and then down to fret each time, hitting each one once. That's what E power chord. All right, so that is uh, maybe the course, I don't know. Then we go back through the exact same clean section with the, the two parts, the, the, the Kirk and Kirk's part that's all over the place, and then um, James Parr is a lot easier. Um, and the same kind of verse. So. That riff, and then the same course riff we just covered. And then back into the clean verse again. All right, now from here, though, we're going to change it up. And we have uh, a different version, really, of this um, clean part. Let's, this is the bridge. It looks like this. Kind of, he develops this a little bit as we go, and I'll show you what's going on as they develop it and kind of make it heavier leading into the solo. But I wanted to kind of break down this riff right here because it does, the bass lines move around quite a bit. So he keeps doing that little We want to keep that going like we did in the main riff. But what we're going to do here is start with just low E and back and forth between those two E's. Then we're going to play two, three on the low E string. So you can pick each one of those notes. And then back to the second fret on the low E, and then you're going to rotate between that and the top note. So you always got to have this as the top note. So we're kind of like... Kind of 
just like that. And now from there, we're going to do this. So that's playing the third fret on the low E, open A string, and then back to the third fret on the low E string. And then you're going to rotate between that and that top E. So we have this. All right, now from there, so that part of the bass line was the open A string, then the second fret on the A, then move over to the second fret on the, that F sharp here, the second fret on the low E string, and use that as the note that you're gonna now rotate between that and the top E note. So we have this so far. To end it, we're gonna play again the third fret on the low E string, and then the open A, and then back to the low E like that. So we have this. So an easy way to do this is when you do that. Those notes you can hit with downstrokes. It kind of makes it easier to kind of lock in with the part. Down, down, down. Down, down, down. Down, down, down. Down, down, down. Just repeat. All right. So then from there, you, you kind of continues that and you start hearing uh, a distorted uh, kind of uh, overdub thing. <laughs> So we still got the clean thing going on underneath it, but we have this coming in on top. So that's just single notes, low E open, so everything's on the low E string. And then play hammer two to three, then play two. Hammer three to five, then play three. And then you're gonna hammer five to seven, and then jump back to the second fret. And then it kind of just repeats. could just kind of leave it maybe three two zero maybe at the end so do it like this a couple times okay so we play this uh that single note version of the room a couple times and then it kind of fully kicks in and we have kind of a power chord version of that riff And that goes into the solo. So that, after we started kicking into the chords, it's basically just these power chords, OE power chord, and hit the open high E and B string with it, and then hammer two to three on the low E, go to that F sharp power chord in the second fret, now hammer three to five on the low E, and then play that G power chord in the third fret. And here we add some the open B and high E string over that as well. Play this. And then go up here and, and hammer five to seven again. Then jump back to the F sharp power chord of the second fret. And then do that three to zero if you want to end it. And then the second time through there with the big horse. He doesn't do any of the open string stuff. He starts really kind of digging in, uh, chugging on the chord. So it's that E to start. You still do the hammer zone. Three, hammer three to two, then the F sharp power chord, then hammer three to five, and then the G, then hammer five to seven, and then the F sharp power chord. Just 
really building up the solo. Now, underneath the solo, he plays that same. And then the other riff, kind of those things back to back. Um, so that's what's going on underneath the solo. Now, for this solo, like I said before, I'm not going to try to do this note for note. There's a few licks that he's doing in there that he's kind of her signature Kirk Hammett things. He does in a lot of solos. He's obviously rocking the wah pedal a lot as well, too. Um, so I'm just going to kind of show you some of those. He's in E minor, so he's using a lot of E minor pentatonic. <laughs> And E minor pentatonic, and then E straight E minor. So if you don't know your basic pentatonic or minor scales, just go to guitarlessen365.com, click on free lessons, and you'll find um, that stuff's probably in the intermediate category, and you can find all the, the scale patterns and stuff that you need. Um, but Or become a member of my academy. That's probably a, a, the easiest way. Um, so anyways, E minor pentatonic. So I will give you ideas of what he's doing around certain sections of the solo. So that beginning, he's starting with a double stop. Obviously, he's got a wah pedal going. So. That's really just kind of just messed around E minor pentatonic. So we're starting with those double stops at the 14th on the G and the B. He's trimming a little picking it and he's bending it up and kind of resolving it down to the 14th fret on the D. And he does some bends there and he goes into this kind of lick over here. There's just that bend to the 15th, then 12 on the high E, then pulling it off 15 to 12. So I'm gonna give you kind of a scattered version of what he's doing here. You can put this stuff together on your own. Common little blues lick that Kirk Hammett does a lot. And then we have this, which is just pulling off 15 to 12 on the high E, over to 15 on the B. So that's you see him doing that, and he kind of get, He's just kind of just messing around with the E minor pentatonic. That same double stop though. I know that's that C sharp in there makes it kind of E Dorian, but so what I'm doing is just messing around with the E minor scale there. That's the full E. You hear him do that. So that's that 13, 12 on the B. 14, 12 on the G, 14, 12 on the D. So he's just, he's kind of working his way down the scale. Uh, down to the 14th fret on the album. There, and then, and then that bend again. And then we're into some more kind of just mess around with E minor pentatonic. Which is that right there is the same lick we did before. But down here at the bending on the G, 12, 12 on the B, and then pull off 14 to 12 on the G. So sorry if I'm flying through this. I'm just not really a solo that I think is something that's even worth kind of going through note for note. We're just kind of touching on some of the licks that you'll hear in it, and then you can do your own thing. Now you do hear this little actual melodic section on his. So that's kind of like playing 14 on the D and then play, that's just 12, 14 on the D, 12, 14 on the G, bend that note up and then resolve it back down here. So you hear that melody in there. Then you kind of start it the same way again. You kind of into that bend and then he grabs the 15th fret on the B and it makes it an oblique bend. So you'll hear that a few times. Thank you. 
Kind of goes down to the E minor to get down and start that melody again. Right there, typical uh, Kirk Hammett like that. He uses a lot in a lot of solos. What is going on? He's taking the top two notes. And he's rocking with the wah pedal there. So I'm just basically playing 15, 12 to the open high E there. I'll then do the same thing here, but 19, 15, open high E. So it. And then from there, he'll just kind of, this is towards the end of the solo, we have this. Well, he's playing this, pulling off that 15, a 19 to 15 open high E a couple times. No, just once there. And then move down to 17, 14 on the high E in that open string. So he keeps going to the open high E there. So back and forth between those a couple times. And then 17, 14 between 15 and 12 a couple times. So we have this. Then uh, some kind of typical kind of blues licks in E minor. And then we do have this little ending lick that he plays. Uh, I'll turn that wall pedal off, it's getting a little annoying. So we have this. So that's kind of kind of matches. It's going over that little section that ends the solo. So we have this. So that's 12 on the G to 13 on the D, and then down a fret, and then down another fret. And then go down here to this ninth fret. Bend up the nine, then play nine, seven on the G. Then play nine, eight, seven. Slide down to five, slide down to four, slide down to two. All right, so that is kind of a scattered way of looking at the solo. I know a lot of, I'm usually like a note for note guy, but this is not a solo that kind of is like kind of a note for note thing. You can, you can see here obvious licks in it, but he's just kind of digging in and going for it. And it's not like a completely recreatable thing. So why even try? So anyway, I hope that gives you enough information about the solo so you can do your own thing with it and, and have fun playing it. Um, and then from there, we're pretty much done. We get back to this same, um, Same chorus with, with that stuff over it, and then it just ends with that. All right, so it's a great track. It's got some really cool, it's really beautiful lines there that, that Kirk Hammett's playing there in the verse section. So uh, I really liked putting it together for you. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. So I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.